Certainly, Council Member Brown. Present. Council Member Daniels. Here. Council Member Garza. Here. Council Member Hussein. Council Member Hussein is absent. Council Member Jackson. Present. Council Member Spadafore. Present. Council Member Spitzley. Here. Council Member Wood. Here. There are seven members present at quorum and we are to the meditation and pledge of allegiance. Is there, yes, um, Mayor Shore. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Um, I would hope that we would keep in our hearts and minds the family of Edwin DeChosa. He um, passed away a few days ago. Um, he was the governor's deputy director for constituent relations, uh, a good friend to many in the in the area, and um, he uh, had a sudden episode at night and um, fought, but it uh, it did not end the way we wanted, and he is now with the Lord, and uh, I hope everyone will keep he and his family, his wife, and their 10-year-old son in their thoughts. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to make a request at this time? Um, I would like to mention Bill Cleary. Um, Bill was a Lansing Police Department volunteer um, for a number of years, worked um, as part of volunteering with RSVP and um, with Triad, and he passed away on March 20th. Um, he was born on March 29th, 1929, and passed away on March 20th, 2022. So um, he served um, our community with uh, a great deal of pride, and uh, our family at LPD asked that we remember him um, with the work that he did. So um, are there any others? Seeing none, if we could please rise. You have for your approval the council proceedings of March 14th. Council Member Spadafore. Thank you, Madam Vice President. I move the uh, proceedings for March 14th, 2022. We have a motion on the minutes. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. At this time, we have um, uh, consider. We don't have any consideration of late items. And so go ahead. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Uh, we're to special ceremonies and presentations. We have a tribute in recognition of Cesar E. Chavez Memorial Observance. And Council Member Garza, and I do believe the mayor has something, um, have our part of the presentation. Councilmember Garza, do you have anyone from the audience that you'd like to have join you up here? Please, anybody uh, from the City of Chavez Committee that wants to speak up verbally? Lived in 
intensive makeshift housing that often lacked a bathroom, electricity, or running water. He was 10 years old when he began working in the fields and was forced to leave school after the eighth grade to help support his family. And whereas, Cesar Chavez became an organizer for the community service organization, the CSO, a barrio-based group where he coordinated voter registration drives, fought racial and economic discrimination, organized new CSO chapters across California and Arizona, and rose to become the CSO's national director from 1958 to 1962. After leaving the CSO, Chavez co-founded the United Farm Workers, the UFW. And under his leadership, the UFW organized strikes and boycotts to protect for and later win higher wages for those farm workers in the grape and vegetable industries. The UFW was instrumental in the passage of the Agriculture Labor Reac Relations Act, which became, became the first law governing farm labor in the continental United States. And whereas for more than three decades, Cesar Chavez led the first successful farm workers union in American history, achieving dignity, respect, fair wages, medical coverage, and pension benefits. His motto in life is, si se puede, it can be done, embodies the uncommon and invaluable legacy he left for the world's benefit. And whereas March 31st is now Cesar Chavez Day in the United States, a national holiday honoring the life and memory of this great labor leader, role model and hero of our United States of America, Whereas the Lansing for Cesar E. Chavez Committee is a grassroots nonprofit organization dedicated to preserving the legacy of the great labor leader and humanitarian who represents the American ideal of equality, tolerance, and justice. This committee has pledged to be his voice and advocate for such cause in preserving the legacy of Cesar E. Chavez through education, commemoration, service, and self-determination. So be it resolved, the Lansing City Council encourages the residents of Lansing celebrate the 13th annual Cesar E. Chavez Memorial Observance for his unwavering efforts of assuming fair wages, good living and humane working conditions, health care, education, and respect for the American farm workers continuing to this very day. And we have a motion, Councilmember Garza. All right, we have a motion on the resolution. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. <laughs> Make it short. I'm gonna take a quick minute to, to, to join. Uh, I'm not going to repeat everything that the councilman said. We have many of those same things in a proclamation that we'll share with you. Um, it, it, it's great to be here today. Um, as you all know, I think in my, my first official day in office, I got to put up a, a, a sign that says, In the middle of winter. <laughs>
figure for nonviolent social change. What's more, he is a father who believes that community service is the only way to see vastly transformational positive change. Something he realized during his 10 years was that San Jose Chapter of Community Service Organization and San Francisco Inspiration Forum. In his moment, you are blessed to be shot by safe people, a sense of your own power. Farm workers who discover they can demand dignity and better wages. Volunteers learn to stack the candle lamp due to social movements. And consumers boycott and break and realize that even the smallest gestures can help force historic change. Inevitably, as a community, you will experience diversity, or I'm sorry, adversity related to your reasons we need uh, to meet some challenges. It is our hope to see Timothy, particularly Chavez, to carry on his legacy. There are continued service and advocacy so that we can help influence historic changes as well as towards alleviating the human needs and challenges of people who are diverse demographic families. Thank you. Hello, I'm going to wrap it up for our committee. I've been a part of this committee for about 10 years, really, and I'm still honored to be a part of it. But each year, the Lake Point for Safety Chavez Committee, we nominate a new book for someone our humanitarian journey. The humanitarian award is given to those who exemplify Timothy Chavez's work and his core values, which are service to others, sacrifice, a preference to help the most needy, determination, nonviolence, acceptance of all people, respect for life and the environment, celebrating community, knowledge, and innovation. Due to the pandemic,
being about five years old and going to um, the bodega, and we were, my mother was trying to buy some lettuce, and um, she said, oh yeah, that's right, we can't have lettuce and we can't have any grapes, and I was like, no, why? She said, because Cesar Chavez is out here helping all of the immigrants, and as a first generation American, you know, that really resonated with her, regardless of where she was from, which was Curacao, she absolutely adored Cesar Chavez. I'd also like to thank my brother, um, Dr. C.B. Tyson, who I just met in July, for really being instrumental in my life. Um, this past winter, we um, donated a furnace uh, to a family on the east side so that they could for the winter. I just really appreciate this. Again, this is, we all should be a part of the process. Regardless of who we are, we really all need to come together in order to make this city work for good. If you see something, say something. If you love something, be a part of it. Don't just sit, you know, in your living room and say you're gonna do something. Get up and do something about it because Lansing is an awesome city and we actually need all of you to be involved. We can't not be in it without winning it. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we'd like to thank everyone uh, that came down this evening. Um, those of you that um, might have been uh, council watchers for some time might uh, remember that um, City Council had had a um, program that we would have um, uh, uh, honoring Cesar Chavez. Um, Guillermo Lopez was one who worked diligently um, on that with us and hopefully next year uh, we'll be able to uh, resurrect that again and make sure that uh, we're doing that because of COVID. We ended up um, not ha not being able to have one for a couple of years, but we're looking forward to um, st starting to plan that in, in January next year so that we can make sure that we've got that going. So again, thank you, Council Member um, Garza and Mayor Shore. Um, we do have a second ceremony that is not um, in the uh, agenda, and that is uh, the mayor's presentation of his annual budget. And so at this time, we will turn it over to uh, the mayor so that he can give us the highlights of the budget. As many of you know, this is an opportunity once the mayor uh, presents the budget um, to us that we have until the third Monday in May to pass the budget. And we will be going through a series of um, meetings and questioning of uh, department heads and, and looking at the budget to, to determine um, the things that council uh, sees as important and asking questions as to the mayor's rationale. So at this time, we I will turn it over to Mayor Shore. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I will be brief, but I uh, just wanted to give you a few of the highlights uh, you have in your packet. The, the full budget that we have proposed, um, and uh, again, some of the, the highlights that we do every year. Uh, the budget this year, the, the fiscal year 2023 budget is, uh, it's total of $241.6 million um, with a general fund budget of $154.8 million. Um, that's a good sign. Uh, certainly at our low point during the pandemic, it was less than that where we were cutting millions of dollars. So I'm glad we were able to to bring that back. Um, some highlights on some, some newer things that you're gonna see in this budget. Um, first, uh, I had announced maybe two weeks, two, three weeks ago that we are planning to bring economic development uh, back in-house through our EDC. I believe this is something that's been in the council priorities for the last two years. So um, we're gonna do that. Um, we're, we're creating the structure now. Um, we will continue to be LEAP members and continue to work regional, but our economic development staff will move in-house. So you'll see that uh, the, the amount uh, will be reflected in the budget. Um, our Office of Financial Empowerment will be adding a grant administrator, which is partially funded with grant administration fees, which will be great for our 
world-class um, Office of Financial Empowerment. We'll be adding a new code compliance officer, which will be important. We'll be adding uh, a new accountant to focus on accounts receivable, bank reconciliations, and the collection of dollars owed to the city. Uh, that's within our finance department. And again, bringing in the, the dollars that we are owed is, is extremely important. We're bringing in a new mechanical inspector, which will be funded with, with fees, so there won't be a cost. Uh, HR, we're going to add a few things that they've needed for several years. Uh, we're going to add a hiring and recruiting specialist. We're going to add a new deputy director. Uh, and we're going to add a health and wellness specialist, all of these which have been needed for quite some time, uh, and it's time to make those happen. Uh, in the city attorney's office, they're getting a, a part-time legal assistant that, uh, that, again, is important. Um, in, in the police department, we're adding an assistant police chief, um, which is, is going to be very helpful for organizational support. Uh, we're also going to be adding uh, another social worker, uh, potentially two, but we're going to start with one, uh, and we're looking at funding sources. Um, but that's actually going to come earlier. We've also sent you a budget amendment for current year budget, and the social worker will be within that budget amendment. Um, we are going to be creating the, the crisis assistance teams that we have talked about in the past here. This is with the federal funding that we just received from the federal government, the $1.2 or $3 million. These are teams of EMS, police, and social workers that will get together and respond based on, on which uh, area of need. Um, we have, again, two social workers now, and we're adding another one and potentially two more. Um, we're also going to, to have a, a public information coordinator within LPD, moving that from a contract position into a, into a full-time position. Um, we've got a Michigan Avenue plan implementation, which, uh, um, again, we're getting federal government funding for. Uh, we'll take that money. We'll combine it with our tri-county regional planning money, uh, our corridor assistance facade grants, and some matching funds from the Community Foundation and hyper-focus on, on Michigan Avenue. Uh, our Parks and Recreation has their, their CIP funding, um, and that will include money for camps and tree planting and replanting, playground upgrades, cemetery repairs, uh, the Washington Park Pavilion and the Foster Park improvements and a variety of other programs. Um, city Council is getting an increase. I know that that has been requested, and we put in uh, an increase for City Council for, uh, I believe it's a position. Um, same with the Mayor's Office, the, uh, the, the Chief Strategy Officer, uh, has requested and needs a business operations analyst, so that's uh, um, an addition to, to my budget, uh, in addition to moving our labor negotiator from HR to the mayor's office. You'll see those changes. Certainly, um, road and street repairs, uh, we'll, we will continue to utilize our millage money directly for our roads, um, as we've done the last four years. Um, we'll also be, and that'll include uh, $2.75 million from Act 51 and others for major street and bridge work. Uh, another 1.84 million for local street repairs. We added in $200,000 for neighborhood sidewalk repairs, um, and we're going to be working on a fire department equipment updates, um, looking at a whole variety of pots of money, uh, including ARPA, including the opioid settlement dollars and grants and other things. Um, we'll also be moving the vacancy factor back to $700,000 from the, I believe it was 1.4 million last year, and that will reflect that we are hiring as opposed to not hiring, which we were not doing during the pandemic. So if we're hiring, the vacancy factor will be less, and that's a good thing for all of us, I think. Um, so that is projected. Um, we're also gonna, we're, we'll be continuing to pay our, our legacy costs. Uh, our, our pension boards and our finance folks have gotten together um, to change the system from the, the pay-go system, the pay-as-you-go, to, uh, to pay, actually paying the annual contributions, which will pay down our debt faster. We're still going to be paying the same amount. I believe this year it's about $54 million towards legacy costs, but it will reduce the, the overall pay down and our overall um, legacy cost amounts. So that's also a good thing. Uh, our reserves will be at minimum back to 12%, um, which is, again, that's, that's the recommendation, although it may actually be higher than that. We're, we're giving a very conservative estimate to start um, so that's all good news. Um, additionally, as I mentioned before, we sent you a, a budget amendment for the 2022 budget. And in addition to the social worker, we included $2 million in hero pay for employees that, um, that are eligible. Um, we have been able to, um, because of, of our efficiencies of our departments, we've been able to um, move about $2 million from the original first tranche of ARPA money into um, $2 million towards our 
uh, eligible employees, uh, police officers, firefighters, public service, and, and Teamsters and others that are eligible. Um, and I assume you'll pass that pretty quickly, I hope. Um, and if you do, uh, we're continuing to work with our unions to make sure we can identify everybody that are eligible. And as soon as we do and that money is passed, we will issue that so we don't have to wait until August when we get the second tranche. And it's a conversation I've had with our, our council uh, vice president, and, and we agree on this one. Um, so I appreciate that. Um, finally, I will mention that uh, there are a few things that are not in the budget, but I don't want you to think we eliminated them. Um, the corridor improvement funds, the, um, which are going to get increased, the neighborhood advisory board funds, which are going to get increased, the arts funds, which I believe are going to get increased, um, those are not in the budget. Those are going to be in the, in the ARPA, the American Rescue Plan Act allocations that we're going to send you in two weeks. Um, we are eligible to pay for those things through ARPA so we can utilize those and buffer and increase those amounts. Um, so you'll have that in two weeks. I just don't want anyone to think we're eliminating these things. We are continuing them. We are increasing them, especially with our corridor improvements, with our facade improvements, um, and with our neighborhood improvements. Uh, it's, it's exciting to be able to take two years to put more money into each of those and be able to utilize the ARPA dollars to do so, in addition to many other incredible transformational things that we're going to be um, suggesting to you in two weeks for your consideration. But we've, we're going to take it one step at a time because we're not there with ARPA yet. Um, finally, I want to thank um, Desiree Kirkland, Jake Brower, and Emily Linden, who are in the front right here on the left. These three individuals have spent significant time and hours putting this budget together, this balanced budget together. Um, and I know that they're going to come before you and, and be able to have conversations with city council along with our department directors. But um, these three individuals have worked so hard on behalf of our city. Um, and I want them to know that I appreciate them, and I hope you all will. And when the budget passes in May, we'll all be very excited for an incredible budget for 22-23. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Uh, thank you, Mayor Shore. Is there anyone that has any questions at this time for the mayor? Yes, uh, Council Member Spadafore. I don't have any questions yet. I mean, I just got the first blush of this. I'm pretty excited to look, at that, take a deep dive in all this. I did want to clarify. I was part of the team that kicked our requests over to your office. The council was not asking for another position. It was uh, operational expenditures. So just wanted to is that what it, okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure that was clear to anyone paying attention. Okay. We're, not, we're not hiring. Yeah, we're all so. looking at each other going, oh. Sorry. In case all right. the council was wondering about All right, that. maybe I overspoke. My apologies. It was They're an operational expenditure. It was, But the, the request that came from council has been funded. Thank uh, you. My right. apologies. And we appreciate that. <laughs> uh, council Member Garza. Thanks, Council President. So one thing I didn't hear, Mayor, is uh, community police officer. Second ward, are we going to... <laughs> move to to get that back I mean because I know you yeah. spoke on it again in the state of the city and um, you know it lasted for maybe two weeks and he was gone so well we're and that's not a new position that's something that we created on you know that you had requested two years ago and we created it um, we can have Chief Sosby speak about that but we will have all we expect to have all of our CPOs filled by June but the south side one I believe is filled um, I think we filled three or four within the last two weeks um, so I can have Chief Sosby speak to you. I know that the South Side one, the the Walnut, uh, the uh, the Walnut um, Old Town position, uh, and there were one or two others. We had four of the twelve or thirteen, yeah, sure. thirteen. We had four that were vacant, um, and I believe that one has been filled. That one was one of the top priorities to be filled, and I think it has been filled. Um, so I'll get with Chief Sosby and have him get with you. But uh, we're not creating new CPOs, but we are filling the CPOs which comes along with hiring police officers, which we are actively doing. Our, our HR is actively hiring officers. And as we hire them, and we can offer positions to police officers. We're doing that very quickly. But again, Chief Sosby has made this a top priority. And we expect to have them all filled by June. But I believe the South Side one has been filled. And I'll have him get you that info. OK, I appreciate that. Because yeah, I did ask him that maybe a couple weeks ago. And he said it hasn't at that point in time. Right. You know, with Myers being the number one calls for service, you know, there's a lot of people in the community that, that would like to see one. So I yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. It's a top priority for me as well. Council Member Jackson. Thank you, um, Vice President Wood. So another thing I didn't hear, and I know it's just the initial thing, and, you know, you got your budget and all that, but um, is a secondary position for our sustainability manager, Lori Welsh, who's doing a great job. She has a climate action plan that needs to be implemented. She has a bunch of grants that um, need to be applied for and managed, and she has to implement a 
things with Johnson Controls and all these different ideas. So um, I'm, you know, I told you before that I was interested in that, and I'm just renewing that, and just letting my colleagues also know that that's one of the things that I'll be pushing for, and I'm able to work on anything else. And I know that uh, um, as far as our council and our administration, you know, roads, police, fire, code, all that stuff is advocated for fully here, so I just want to make sure we don't leave out the sustainability aspect, so I'll be advocating for that. And we have, I know you, we and I have, you and I have spoken about that. I, I was not, we get a lot of requests, so I was not able to get that into the budget, but um, certainly I'm, I'm happy to work with you and any other member of council for priorities that come up, and i um, happy to, to chat with you and hear, you know, thoughts on, on the funding for that and moving forward. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, we thank you, Mayor, for that presentation. We, I understand that Mr. Brower had um, forwarded the budget to us at 5 o'clock, so council members don't have in front of them the printed copy, but you should have it, if not by the end of the meeting, uh, first thing tomorrow. So you should have it. It is in an email form um, uh, in your email, so you can take a look at it there. With that... We are to comments by council members and the city clerk. Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Madam Vice President. I wanted to make um, you aware of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, an event on Tuesday, March 29th. It's a continuing, can you, it's a continuation of the Veterans Story Project. Tomorrow it will be Vietnam Veterans Stories. Um, it's, it's uh, the Veterans Story Project is driven by Lansing Cityhood, empowered by a community to honor, remember, and educate. Um, it will be featuring um, Vietnam veterans and a city council person, myself, um, will be telling my dad's story um, and his story as a Vietnam veteran, a prisoner of war, um, a Bronze Star Medal uh, for Valor. And so that's tomorrow, March 29th. Um, at it starts at I think it starts at it starts at 6:45 um, at the Alfreda Schmidt Community Center Auditorium, 5825 Wise Road, Lansing, Michigan, 48911. Um, and tickets will be available there. Um, and there's no charge for veterans and Gold Star families. And again, and I've mentioned it before, it's just a great opportunity to honor our folks who have. Um, some who've paid the ultimate sacrifice, but those who go and fight for our country and keep our country safe. So I hope you can make it. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councilmember Spitzley. Uh, Councilmember Garza, and then Councilmember Jackson. Thank you, Council President. Um, I just wanted to put this on your radar. April 24th is the I Love My Lansing event. It's, a, it's an event put on by the South Lansing Church of Nazarene. It's at 401 West Holmes. I will uh, bring this back up as, as uh, the day gets closer with specifics, but it's a really good event. Um, we clean up South Lansing. We clean up the Edgewood Corridor from MLK to Cedar Street. Uh, I know we're, this year we're going to be focusing on this, uh, the flower planters on South Cedar Street as well and, uh, and North Cemetery. Uh, uh, cemetery. So as, as we move forward with that, I'll get the more specifics. I think it's 9 a.m., but can't quote me on that yet. But... As far as that, it's uh, Sunday, April 24th. It's with the Church of Nazareth in South Lansing. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Garza. Councilmember Jackson. Thank you. I just want to commend our Parks and Rec Department for their youth sports teams. As a parent with young kids, I've been able to utilize floor hockey and soccer already this year, and Brett Kosinski, but especially Mark Sanford is the person that's in charge down there. He does a great job. The pandemic has kind of limited our choices for what our kids can do and be socially developed. But now it's kind of, I'm not gonna say it's over, but things are open a little more. And um, Lansing Parks and Rec Youth Soccer is starting. So if you have a kid under 14, it's a great program to get them out and get them moving and also to keep working on their social development that we kind of missed out for the last few years because you can't really be around people, especially the young kids. So youth soccer, Lansing Park and Parks and Rec is great. And contact Mark Sanford at the Southside Community Center, Lansing Parks and Rec, to sign up. 
Thank you, Councilmember Jackson. And are there any other comments? Seeing none, we turn it back over to the clerk. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice President. I do have one quick announcement. We amount, announcement we mailed about 10,000 ballots for the uh, May school uh, millage election uh, last week. I know, I think most people got them in their mailbox today uh, who have requested a ballot. There's still plenty of time to request a ballot and to register, so uh, you can contact my office at lansingmi.gov slash clerk or um, call us at 483-4131. And with that, um, we are to, um, we are to public event announcements. If anyone in the audience has a, a community event that you would like to announce, we'll give you one minute to announce it. And seeing nobody jumping up, uh, I will announce that um, for those who wish to speak on legislative matters, that is items that are on the agenda. Uh, that does include items um, three through uh, 23 on the agenda. Um, please complete a blue sheet with Jessica in the back and uh, do that in the next minute and we will call on you. You'll have up to three minutes to speak. And uh, at this point, we are to the mayor's comments. Mayor Shore. Thank you, Council President. Um, first, I want to take the opportunity to thank everybody um, up here and in the audience. As you all know, I, after two years, contracted COVID. Um, and this is why our community is so special. Uh, I think everybody up here on this dais sent me um, very nice texts and thoughts, um, and it is tremendously appreciated, and I want you all to know that. We work together, we're colleagues, we don't always agree, but we are always agreeable, and, and every one of you, um, thank you. And you have my admiration and respect, as you always have, but even more now. Same to those um, in our community. Um, I, I got so sick of being in my basement that I had to go out for a walk and somebody who I didn't know came over to me and said, hope you're feeling better. Um, it's just we have that kind of city. And, um, and I want to thank everybody for that. Um, greatly appreciated. It means tons to me. Um, outside of that, uh, and I'm feeling fine, today is day 11, um, which is why I can be with you all. Day 11 since symptoms, but I'm going to keep masking up this week just to be ultra careful. Um, but I'm not contagious, thank God. Uh, outside of that, over the last few weeks, we've had a lot of great things here in Lansing. That's right, plexiglass. Uh, We've had a lot of great things here in Lansing. We have a new cohort of small businesses at Middle Village. Um, so go in and, and check those out. Um, several of them have graduated out of Middle Village into our downtown. So that uh, incubator space is working and it's great. We're excited. Um, we also had an incredible ribbon cutting at the Nelson Gallery. They couldn't have a ribbon cutting. So we had a one year celebration. Um, I want to congratulate uh, city treasurer or county treasurer Eric Schertzing, who is retiring. Um, it was an honor to be part of his retirement celebration um, and, and present a, an Eric Schertzing Day, although I was trumped by the drain commissioner who actually named a drain after him. So um, you always get beat no matter who you are. Um, but uh, congratulations to, to Eric. Um, I just want to congratulate the Lansing Pharaohs, our basketball team here. They had their first game at the Don Johnson Fieldhouse. I could not go. Um, but uh, I hope everyone will check their website and support our, our new uh, basketball team here in Lansing, the Lansing Pharaohs. Um, I want to congratulate Kathleen Edgerly on presenting her first State of the Downtown. Again, I wasn't able to be there, but I heard it was it went very well, so I hope everyone will check that out if you can see it. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, the Reverend Dr. Melvin T. Jones, who has uh, retiring and, and moving um, to Alabama, um, certainly a, a staple in our community, incredible mentor to me. Um, I was not able to attend his going away party, um, but uh, I heard it was well attended and great, and, uh, and I thank him for all he's done for, for me and for our city. And finally, um, especially for our, our small businesses, our, uh, the City of Lansing and the National Nonprofit Cities for Financial Empowerment Fund uh, announced the launch of Small Business Boost, which is a new pilot program to connect small business owners and entrepreneurs to one-on-one -on -one financial empowerment programs. Uh, Lansing joins Akron, Ohio, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Polk County, Iowa, and Rochester, New York in collecting and connecting local small business support services to the Financial Empowerment Center initiative. Um, it offers professional one-on-one -on -one financial counseling as well as some pre free public services. So once again, our Office of Financial Empowerment is leading the way nationally, and I'm excited that we've been able to partner with the Financial Empowerment Fund. So if you know small businesses, 
uh, here in Lansing, make sure that you connect them with our Office of Financial Empowerment. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Sorry to take so long, but uh, lots to say. Thank you, Mayor. All right, we are to uh, public comment on legislative matters, and we do not have any actual public hearings, so it is items 3 through 23, and the first speaker is Randy Dykeis, followed by Rocky, uh, I'm going to butcher this name, Antikir. So if you got Dykeis right, I think you did pretty well. <laughs> Uh, so Randy Dyke, guys, 418 North Sycamore, again. Uh, I'm not going to repeat what I said at the uh, Committee of the Whole because I think that David Price made my case for me in his remarks. He is not fit for another term on the BWL Board of uh, Commissioners. He speaks only in management talking points. He doesn't talk about what the board, how the board governs and what the board actually does and doesn't seem to understand the difference between management and the board. And, and the board had a responsibility to hold management accountable for actions that they take, for possible malfeasance, and for to look into things that are going wrong uh, within our community, within, within the board of water and light. When he's talking management, talking points, he does pretty well. Uh, you heard that. He's very slick when he talks about that. He makes the management talking points sound like the board talking points. And I don't think that that ought to be the case. Uh, and he, he said virtually nothing about how the board actually governs, what kind of governing actions they take uh, to uh, move uh, uh, BWL forward and move the community forward. There's nothing in his remarks, for example, about the contamination of groundwater in Delta Township that has now seeped into private wells and drinking water. Are we on the verge of another drinking water crisis in this state? such as we've seen in Flint and Benton Harbor. We don't know because the board has refused to do anything other than a cursory examination uh, of what's gone on. And plenty of details have been in the City Pulse about this. I just reviewed those articles this afternoon before I came here. Names are named, people are in there from the state, and it would be easy for the board to call those people to a, a commission meeting to ask them uh, what, what is the, the current state of that contamination? He also, one of the talking points he said is that uh, when Erickson closes, when BWL closes the Erickson plant, which is a coal-fired plant here in Lansing, when they close it, BWL will, will not be using coal to generate electricity. That's not true. They have a part ownership in a power plant in St. Clair County. They partly own it with DTE. It is a coal-fired plant. It will still be supplying energy to Lansing from coal. So, that, so to say that they, be, so, so why is he saying that? Management says that. So he parrots management without, without asking the hard question about that. When, when he got off script, when, when uh, council person Wood pressed him about the harassment that went on, uh, he, he was flummoxed. He foundered. Uh, he doesn't seem to have the capacity to, to think independently of what is fed to him by management. So I'm out of time. Uh, I'm hoping that a couple of you will change your votes so that we can uh, get a new new board of commissioner uh, on the BWL board. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And we have Rocky Antikir followed by Robert Kennedy. How you doing? My name is Rocky Antikir. I bought a house at uh, 3601 Deerfield. I've been in, talk, in, in contact with Lynn from the code enforcement. She told me that I could, if I got a dumpster and got working on the house, that they would reconsider tearing it down so I went and got a dumpster and we cleaned the house out. And we filled one dumpster, we got two dumpsters, and uh, we got the roof off it. And I've been trying to get a billing permit. I've been down there like five times and um, I can't seem to get a billing permit. They wanted to. Uh, licensed contractor, so I licensed contractor to uh, do the roof, and then they said we had to have get an architect engineer, which I hired Bob here, and I still having trouble getting a billing permit. I uh, bought the house for my daughter and my grandson, and I just was wondering what I could do to acquire a billing permit. And I've been down there like five times now, and I just 
they keep putting me off. You know, first he said it was a, the, I had I took the title down there. They said there was, they rescinded the title. I went out to the Mason and there was, there, they didn't rescind no title. I've been out there twice and I just like said I'm having I've called the mayor's office twice, and I'm not getting anywhere. I just wondering what I got to do to get a billing from it and proceed. The house is red tagged, but I, I can make it look brand new. I just wondering what's going to take for me to get a billing from it and proceed. This is your time for to make comments, and then when this comes up during the council meeting on the resolution, we can let you know. Okay. Thank you. It's, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we have Robert Kennedy. Hi. I just I went down to the building department today to I inspected the house today, and uh, I went down to the building department to talk to him to find out exactly why you can't just pull a permit and put a roof on it. Um, apparently the house is, is had a bad roof for quite a while. Um, there's a lot of wet wood, drywall, the, floor, the floors are buckling. Um, he wants it inspected, but he won't, I can't get in there to inspect it without, the, without being cleaned out. The, the basement's flooded, the, uh, there, there's just, sawdust and, and, and clothes and, and everything else soaking wet in this house. And that's when he brought up the demolition. He said, because it's under a, a order for demolition, that it, cha it changes everything it's about the permitting. I've never been involved in, a, I mean, I've, I've done thousands of house plans and remodels over the years, and I've never run into anything like this where we have to have a inspection before we could even start work normally we'd just do the work repair everything and has to be repaired and then the building inspector would come through and say you're fine but now I, with this demolition we were told i was told today that that it was not scheduled to come up tonight but they said they said it's been through three meetings and the fourth one is when they, they put it out for bids and so I said, well, when's it, when's it going to come up at the, at the city council? He said, well, well, it's not tonight. He said, it'll probably be next week. It'll, it'll be, uh, you can look online and find out. Lo and behold, I look online, and it's tonight. Um, I, I don't know if that was in your plans to, to cover that early sometime tonight or what. I, I don't know how this situation works. But, you know, he bought a house, and now he can't. They're not letting him repair it, and it's just going to get worse. I mean... I don't know who determines that it needs to be de demolished. Um, I inspected. I went inside the house. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of wet wood and there's some damaged wood, but that's, we find that in every remodel. So I don't know what to say. Thank you, sir. And, and again, um, when this comes up on the agenda, we will uh, address some of your concerns at that point. So it's not on the agenda for tonight, then? Yes, it is on the agenda. It's for okay. setting the public hearing. That's all we're doing tonight is setting a public hearing. And um, that will then have an opportunity for um, those that have an interest in the property to then come back to council and address us then. Then it goes back to Public Safety Committee. And then we look at it again. And then there's the final meeting to determine whether you know, council is going to approve, make safe, or demolish. So this will be like Wednesday or, or Thursday this week, or? Um, it will be at the next public safety meeting, and that is, well, it, the uh, public hearing is the 11th. Um, April 11th would be the public hearing, and then after that would be the um, public safety committee. So, I mean, how long would you estimate it's, it's going to be? The problem is, the way it is now, it's just going to get worse and worse. If you keep, uh, yeah. Again, we'll address this in, in just a few minutes. Okay. It will be up on the agenda. So if gotcha. just, just wait for a few minutes, Thank hopefully you. your questions will be answered at that point. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comment? That was the final one. So we are to the consent agenda. 
And on the consent agenda, we have everything except item 17, which we'll pull from the consent agenda. And I don't know if there is anyone here um, that is um, a, an appointment. Is there anyone here that was appointed to a board? We didn't attend we it. Check it. We don't think so. Okay. We had two we were expecting, but no. No. Okay. okay. Then All right. I would also know, Madam, for. Madam President, uh, item five, the tribute recognition of Cesar Chavez was well, yes. already addressed, as well as item 15, a grant acceptance from the Michigan Economic Development Corporation did not come out of ways and means this evening. Yes. Um, we'd already accepted that grant. So Yes, that needs to be pulled. Thank you. So on the agenda is the appointment of Joe Sinha as a business owner, a member of the North Grand River Corridor, proven a board of authority. Appointment of Mary Alicia Gonzalez as a business owner, member of the North Grand River Corridor Improvement Authority Board of Directors. Tribute recognizing Duana Ben, recipient of the Business Excellence Award from the Greater Lansing Area Club of the National Association of Negro Business and Professional Women's Clubs. A tribute in recognition of Dallas Dale Kopich, the recipient of the Frederick Douglass Award from the Greater Lansing Area Club of the National Association of Negro Business and Professional Women's Clubs, Incorporated. A tribute in recognition of Jariah Richard Rollins as a recipient of the Youth on the Move Award from the Greater Lansing Area Club, Lansing Area Club of the National Association of Negro Business and Professional Women's Clubs Incorporated. A tribute in recognition of Joshua Y. Gillespie II, recipient of the Community Service Award from the Greater Lansing Area Club of the National Association of Negro Business and Professional Women's Clubs Incorporated. A tribute in recognition of the Honorable Judge Shauna Dunnings as a recipient of the Sojourner Truth Award from the Greater Lansing Area Club of the National Association of Negro Business and Professional Women's Clubs, Incorporated. A tribute in recognition of Riley Lewis as a recipient of the Youth on the Move Award from the Greater Lansing Area Club of the National Association of Negro Business and Professional Women's Clubs, Incorporated. Item condemn a resolution from the Committee of the Whole condemning the Russian invasion of Ukraine. I, item 13 is Development District Liquor License for Strange Matter Coffee Downtown, a Development District Liquor License for Strange Matter in Old Town, a setting the public hearing and consideration of special assessment for the Glenburn Commons Trash and Grass Abatement, the reappointment of Robert Bobby Freiling as an at-large member of the Board of Zoning Appeals, a, a special land use number two of 2021 for 5411 Wise Road to allow for a new Board of Water and Light Electrical Power substation in the R2 Suburban Detached Residential Zone. I hereby move the consent agenda as amended. We have a motion before us. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay, we are to uh, item 17, the reappointment of David Price. Uh, Council Member Spadafore. Madam President, I would move the resolution reappointing David Price as an at-large member of the Board of Water and Light for a term to expire June 30th, 2026. Highlight that the committee did meet, uh, heard, uh, the committee of the whole did meet um, at 5.30 this evening, heard a uh, presentation from uh, Mr. Price, um, answered some questions from the committee relative to green energy, some employment practice and policies, um, and then the committee did move that reappointment out to the floor this evening um, with some objection. Okay, we have a motion before us. Uh, with that, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. The motion passes. And we are to item 20, a show cause hearing for 3601 Deerfield Avenue. Uh, Council Member Daniels. All right, so uh, we're setting a show cause hearing in consideration of orders to make safe or demolish to the owners of property located at six, uh, 3601 Deerfield Avenue. The property was reg tagged uh, uh, 9 3 2020. Are the pictures going to come up? The, there they are. Oh, perfect. So you see the pictures? I've got uh, yeah, 9 3 4 3 9. Um, there, were, there were pictures on the screen um, that show you the extent of the damage within the home. It was originally owned um, by a Mary Wade who passed away in October of last year. A uh, quick claim deed was signed in February of this year um, to uh, a gentleman named Rocky. Um, the estimated cost of fixing the home was $71,000 before the house, uh, the home, the roof has since been removed and it has rained several times. So everything inside has warped and is in, uh, 
you know, soaked through thoroughly. Um, it's estimated now that the cost would be actually double that. So with that, I move to set the show cause hearing for 3601 Deerfield Avenue for April 11th, 2022. And to put some further context to answer some of the questions that were raised um, during the public comment, the process for Make Safer Demolish is um, once this comes to council, we set a show cause hearing which is set for April 11th, if the council votes on that this evening. Um, after that, it will go back to the Public Safety Committee, which will meet on April 21st at 4 p.m. in the conference room in the back. The criteria for um, taking a property off the Make Safe or Demolish um, agenda is the following. One, all permits have to be pulled. Two, there has to be uh, a show of financial stability to be able to pay for all the repairs. And three, there has to be a timeline that has been approved by uh, the public or the um, code compliance to make sure that this is done in a timely manner. Uh, because of some of the structural issues, uh, code compliance manager did talk about the fact that they were going to be needing some engineering and things done um, with this. To my knowledge, there is no um, prerequisite that says that during de demolition that they won't give you a permit. You can continue at your own dis you know, discretion with getting permits, continue to work on it. That doesn't mean that that will stop the process. Once a house goes into Make Safe or Demolish, if the council votes on it, you have then an additional third or 60 days to um, make safe the property at that time, which then, if it comes to um, the improvements are over half the assessed value, then it comes off the roll. So um, those are some of the steps that you move forward. I would encourage you, you know, um, we can always have the mayor's office reach out to see if there is an issue with not having, uh, with code compliance not issuing a permit to make sure we understand clearly what their criteria is for, for that. But normally, permits are issued during uh, the make safe or demolish um, process. Again, it's something that you're doing under your, um, that uh, under, your own risk. risk. That's, thank you, your own risk. Um, because that doesn't mean that the property uh, will stop in the process. So with that, um, Council Member Spadafore, did you have a question? All right. Are there any other questions on this? Uh, yep, yep. Sir, you'll need to, to talk, um, again, to code compliance, or if you'd like to reach out to the mayor's chief of staff who's here, um, she can also talk to you about the situation. All right. With that, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose. Um, it passes unanimously. And again, the public hearing on this will be April 11th. You'll need to uh, come back at that time. We are to item 21, claim number 1888 for 28th. $128 in trash violation fees at 3333 North MLK. Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Madam Vice President. What we have before us is um, a um, claim appeal in the amount of $2,828 in trash violation fees at 333 North Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. The owner of this um, the owner of this location um, is, was apparently remodeling the home, and um, he was cited for a number of things, including um, the fact that if you are remodeling, you must have a dumpster on site at all times. Um, he was also cited for um, accumulation of indoor-type furniture and outdoors, um, and um, he was notified on September 14th and uh, September 10th of 2021 of both of those violations. Um, he did not uh, 
show up to um, city operations committee and as such, um, it was voted out of committee. His appeal was denied and it was voted out of committee for council. Um, and um, I don't see him here today either. And so with that, I would move the resolution denying his claim. I would add before we do that, that the original claim was for $3,328. Mr. Hall subsequently mailed a check for $500 to the city of Lansing to call it good. Um, it was not good, so we've um, subtracted the $500 that's already sitting in the treasurer's office to make um, the final um, denial claim of $2,828. So with that, I'll move the resolution. Thank you, we have a motion on the resolution. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you, Councilmember Spitzley. And we are to item 22, Act 8 of 2021. Councilmember Garza. Thank you, Council President. So this Act 8 of 2021 is a real estate purchase agreement between GG Acquisitions LLC for parking lot number 50 at the southwest corner of Pier Maquette Drive and Shiawassee Street. So the Economic Development and Planning Department is proposing to sell the city-owned and administered parking lot, commonly referred to as Lot 50. Uh, and I just mentioned this lot is in the Stadium District at the southeast, southwest corner of East Shiawassee Street and Pier Marquette. This is an underutilized parking lot. We went from, in 2017, having a revenue of $12,187 to last year of 2021 of $1,951. Uh, this could be a potential for a headquarters, new headquarters, bringing new employees to downtown Lansing. And uh, this lot may continue to be used as service parking and the proposed buyer has committed to maintaining public parking after 5 p.m. for up to two years. The public hearing is set for April 11th, which they will be here to address any questions or concerns. With that, I'd move the resolution. Thank you, we have um, the resolution before us. Are there any questions at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, passes unanimously. Thank you, Council Member Garza. And we are to ordinances for introduction and setting of public hearings. Um, we have item 23, uh, which is uh, the Committee of the Whole introduced an ordinance of the City of Lansing, Michigan to amend the Lansing Codified Ordinances by amending Chapter 1300, Sections 1300.07, 0 .10, and 0 .11 to update the ordinance to reflect changes in law and rules in the recently adopted form-based zoning code. The ordinance is read a first time by its title and referred to the Committee of the Whole. Council Member Spadafore. Uh, Madam President, I would move the resolution setting for setting public hearing uh, for Monday, April 25th, 2022 at 7 p.m. in the Lansing City Council Chambers. Um, at that time, we'll hear a more detailed presentation, but the Committee of the Whole did hear uh, the rationale for these changes to items 1300.7.10 and .11, uh, basically bringing in line uh, the current terms of uh, zoning art that are used in form-based code as they were under the old ordinance. So. We'll have a little bit more explanation at the public hearing. All right, thank you. Are there any questions or concerns at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay, we are to speaker registration for public comment on city government related matters. That's the blue form. Uh, can be any item related to the operation of the city and you'll have up to three minutes. Uh, we'll give you another minute to sign up. And in the meantime, we're to um, reports of city officers, boards, and commissions. Council Member Spadafore. Madam President, I move that all items be considered as read and in full, and the proper referrals be made by you. I have a motion before us. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay, we have items from the city clerk, minutes of boards and commissions. Placed on file. And the noti notification of placement on file of the Fourth Amendment to the lease agreement for Lansing Shuffleboard, LL. Committee of the Whole and placed on file. A notification of the placement on file of Executive Order 22-01, renaming the uh, Department of Neighborhoods and Citizen Engagement to the Department of Neighborhood Arts and Citizen Engagement. 
Committee of Whole. Uh, notification of the placement on file of Tri-County Regional Planning Commission financial statements. Ways and means and internal auditor. And determinations of the elected officers compensation commission, uh, three separate documents, one related to the city clerk, one for the mayor, and one for the council president, vice president, and council members. Um, all of those go to uh, committee of a whole. And the placement on file of executive directive 2201, uh, Michigan Protection and Advocacy Service Inc. Records Request Policy. Uh, committee of the Whole. We have items from the Mayor, Grant Acceptance 2022 Coronavirus Emergency Supplemental Funding. Ways and Means and Internal Auditor. Um, committee of the Whole. Uh, <laughs> uh, item 33, setting a public hearing uh, for the end. Uh, items 33 and 34. Uh, Community Development Block Grant Resources, setting the hearing and adopting the plan. Committee of Whole. And we have uh, item 35, budget policies and a, a, a amendment to the indemnification policy. Uh, committee of a Whole. Uh, we have the 22-23 budget that the mayor went over earlier. Committee of a Whole. And we have a current year budget amendment. Committee of a Whole. And, and those that dealing with the budget all should be a committee of the whole and internal auditor. I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Um, we have ballot proposal act to the sale of a portion of North Cemetery. Committee of the whole. Uh, setting a public hearing and action for the uh, lease agreement with Lansing Shuffleboard LLC. Committee of the whole. Communications and petition claim number. 1878, Jolina O'Berry for $651 in board up fees. Uh, city operations. And a notice from Liquor Control Commission, Hooked Community LLC for a new Class C license, uh, license uh, with uh, several permits attached to it. City operations. And an affidavit of disclosure from Brendan Basiga of the Board of Ethics. Um, ethics Board. We are to motion of excused absence. Yes. I make a motion to excuse absent council members. We have a motion before us. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. We are two additional remarks by council members. Do we have any other remarks by council members? My only other remark would be um, to Mayor, and um, I ask this every time I when I quickly looked at the information that was sent to us by Jake. I did not see um, the line item. Was it in there? Okay, never mind. Okay, I'm satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> I'm satisfied. You write that down. I, I commented Council Member Wood doesn't have to ask for it because it's already been sent to her. <laughs> it came in at five o'clock, so that was, <laughs> thank you. Are there any other comments from Council Members? Seeing none. Remarks by the mayor. Mayor Shore. I swear to God, I was going to say the line items were provided and I forgot. Um, <laughs> so that's really funny. Um, I do want to, I, I forgot to mention in my list of things before, uh, next mobile food pantry is April 9th uh, at Lansing Catholic. Um, so for all of those uh, interested, uh, it's same time at 9 a.m. until the food runs out. Um, but I apologize for getting to mention that. I also want to um, let everyone know, I, I mentioned it before in the presentation, but we have with us uh, Jane Baez de Sessa, who is the, the, the newer, I say not new, um, chief of staff here uh, for me in, the, in, in my office. Um, she knows that, that Mark was here, but she wanted to be here for city council to be sure that you all get a chance to see her. If you haven't met her yet, I hope you will. Um, she is tremendously talented. She formerly served in the city of Berkeley. She served the city of Pontiac. She served in the city of Brighton, Colorado. Um, San Antonio. Um, she is a tremendously talented uh, city manager slash deputy mayor slash chief of staff, um, and we are very excited to have her here. So I hope everybody here on city council gets a chance to meet her. I know she's trying to meet everybody. She's meeting with all of our department heads to get up to speed, but I, I want to welcome her. Um, thank you, Madam President. All right. Thank you. All right. We are to public comment on city government related matters. We have Randy Dykeis. Followed by Daniel K. Okay. Um, so, 
Um, I would love to walk out of here some night and say I'm satisfied. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be tonight. Um, so I, I have three asks for you. Um, one, it, 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 it seems to me that the, the, the board of commissioners at the BWL is is totally dysfunctional and completely broken and needs to be fixed. The, the notion that they have to go along to get along <laughs> has got to stop, and they need to be held accountable, and that's not happening today. So something needs to change. Um, so in the, in the, I'm asking you to do something about that, uh, because we've got pel public health issues that are, are, are vitally and need to be addressed. And so in the long term, what you could do is make administrative board members elected instead of appointed. I know that's not a panacea, I, and I know that may be a bridge too, hot, too far for you uh, at this point, but please consider it and think about it. When you have a board governing an entity that has revenue greater than the city of Lansing revenue, don't you want the best governance possible? You all are elected. You all are not appointed. Isn't it time that we had an elected board at BWL? If that, like I say, if you can't go that far, um, how about an oversight committee that you appoint for the BWL board? Uh, and that can uh, address issues and, and call people to testify and talk to them uh, if, the, if the board won't do it. Uh, that's the first one. Do something to reform the BWO Board of Commissioners, please. Number two, stop reappointing commissioners who are not, who are not uh, um, qualified and have, no, have shown no willingness uh, to provide real oversight for BWL. And number three, a little bit different, Appoint an environmental affairs committee uh, that is part of this body. The mayor's sustainability commission is a great start, uh, but I don't think it's sufficient. We need a committee that has permanence, and who knows, the next mayor, sure, we've got another three years because this mayor's been reelected, but what happens after that? What, the next, what if he's not here after three years? And a new mayor comes in and says, well, we really don't need that anymore. If we've got a committee that you have created and that's responsible to you, uh, it's permanent, and that committee can also look into issues of public health like the groundwater contamination. Uh, and it's especially urgent now that that happened. And if you don't want to reappoint a committee now to look at that issue, that particular issue, please have one of your current committees take that up um, because who knows how serious it could get. And, it, and, and I really think it's time that somebody take it very seriously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next we have Daniel Kay followed by Thomas Hamlin. Good evening. This is Daniel Arnold, Facebook guy smiley. I love Lansing and visit eight government properties a day, Monday through Friday, speaking to security and police. Uh, there are resources available for vulnerable populations of adults in this community, and it's really good to see that. Uh, City Rescue Mission serves a wonderful dinner every night. Many other outreach programs show up to help others. Capital Area District Libraries accommodate many different people at once with kindness and quality services. Church and nonprofits uh, and excited individuals reach out all over this city. I know this is a time with federal funding to start new projects, but I would advise we put resources into maintaining what already exists. Following the River Trail, against the bottom of the Lansing Center is a cobweb area in ruin. The wall is halfway covered with gray graffiti covering paint holes like a third world country. I know we like Rotary Park light display and the and emergence of new projects, but this blighted close to the commerce area section needs love. Can we do something? Can we put out a bulletin seeking volunteer artists? The city is our state capital. We are doing big things, but we must not neglect yesterday's masterpieces. We can do better. Lastly, I would like to do a shout out to Dr. Jeffrey Brown. Council member, I'm excited about your positive energy and professionalism. May you accomplish all you desire serving the city of Lansing. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, it's Thomas Hamlin. Okay, dear city council members and mayor and others, uh, thank you so much for taking the time and energy to serve your fellow citizens by serving on the council.
Today I'm here to speak about an important environmental issue that has devolved over the past 14 years. It is my understanding that in 2008, the longstanding forestry department was combined and placed under the direction and leadership of Parks and Recreation Department as a cost-cutting measure. The newly combined department quickly liquidated the forestry department's equipment and reduced the staff. This is today's current situation. This has resulted in a deliberate policy of deforestation. It is very similar to programs known as clear cutting and slash and burn in jungle areas around the world. The previous policy of forestry management included the removal of dead or diseased trees, stump grinding, and then tree replacement. The trees are beneficial. They sequester carbon from the air, cool the environment, alleviate flooding, provide cover and food for birds and animals, and provide beauty for the citizens. Today, I'm formally requesting the replacement of 80 trees removed and not replaced in my old Everett neighborhood. I have provided a list to the city council in your general email inbox, a very detailed list. I appreciate your consideration of this. Now, this has been going on for quite a while. On Pennsylvania Avenue, uh, coming down here tonight, I noticed that between south of Mount Hope and uh, north of Cavanaugh, on the west side, there's, oh, half a dozen, maybe 15 trees cut down. Now, the, the trees provide a lot for us that actually require no maintenance once they're there, unless they need to be, be cut down. So it's not like we need to have a new windmill or solar panels that require maintenance and upgrades. We need the trees. Um, I have um, had news articles and other things that just indicate that there's a, just a positive benefit. And I'm so glad, I, I didn't plan it this way, but I'm so glad that you folks are in, mit, in the midst of a budget sort of thing. And Parks and Recreation was mentioned because I really believe that um, people can do it. Now there is not, as I can determine, a request method where if someone has a tree cut down in front of their house, they can request a replacement. So I just gave you all 80 of them as a request because there's no policy there for it. So uh, I want to eliminate in the middle of that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Is that our final speaker? That was it. Okay. With that, we are adjourned. Thank you. We did. Okay. Couldn't have our president having an unexcused absence, could we? <laughs> <laughs>